Hi everyone, welcome to UPSC Tree. So the UPSC Men's 2020 exam is going on and uh, UPSC has given us a lot of surprise this year, specifically general studies paper. And uh, let's do an analysis of the general studies paper one. And again, we'll do the general studies paper two analysis after some time. So let's look at the general studies paper one and uh, let's understand where UPSC is going with this one. See, a couple of things I want to say you before uh, you know, before uh, getting into the nitty gritties of the questions. First of all, the shortcuts are not going to work anymore. We used to think that there is a distinction between UPSC preparation and OPSC preparation. Uh, but that gap has been closed now. Okay, OPSC is not emulating UPSC. It, uh, it is at par with UPSC now. If you look at the general studies paper specifically. And some of the questions are better than UPSC questions. So, the competition is getting tougher. The questions are getting tougher and very analytic and very logical, but it is a welcome move. It is befitting of a you know civil service uh, examination. Okay, and uh, uh, many students, uh, I know many of them, uh, they chase behind model answers, past year paper, and uh, you know the answers to them. Uh, don't do that. That is not going to help you in a long run. And you have to uh, prepare the right way. Take your time, prepare the right way, have an intimate knowledge of the subject, synthesize it, think about it, whatever you read today, think about it, okay. Most of the questions are going to come from your afterthought, okay, whatever you read and, and, and many of the time you have to integrate the current affairs into it. So, shortcuts are not going to work, model answers of last year papers are not going to work and, uh, and another thing I have seen with the students is that they keep on accumulating this PDF, that PDF, a lot of PDFs, you know, they accumulate over the years or a lot of materials. Don't do that. It will, uh, that is only going to take you in a guilt trip and uh, because you have accumulated so much of material and you have, you know, you, have, you haven't able to finish it. So that's not going to help you much. So no shortcuts, do it or prepare it the right way. Writing takes time. Okay. Writing takes time. Writing has a learning curve. Okay, so start writing itself now if you are preparing for OPC 2021 and prepare it in a manner so that you have a holistic understanding of things and irrespective of what UPC or OPC is throwing at you, you are able to you know handle it and, and that needs a thorough reading. No shortcuts, no accumulation of too much of materials but you have to raise the bar of your you know analytical abilities by reading different things. I, I'll I'll come up with you know some uh, we have thought of some innovative uh, methods where we'll uh, recommend the student to watch movies certain movies which are going to be benef very beneficial we'll ask you to read certain books we'll give you a time frame and read uh, ask you to read certain books and tell us you know what you think about the book so your analytical abilities has to improve anyway uh, more on that uh, after a while so let's go to the question the first question is asking about why the uh, impact of uh, medieval mystic saints and Sufi poets were rather short-lived in Indian society. If you look at Bhaktism and Sufism, they rose against the social evils of those times, uh, but their impact was not much widespread because uh, they, they stood against caste system, but still the caste system is or caste hierarchy is persistent in Indian society today. So they stood against untouchability, but still untouchability is highly prevalent in rural India even though our constitution has banned it and all other social evils that we come across today. They, so in this way you have to show where their impact was short lived and didn't you know didn't reform the Indian society uh, to the extent they have desired and after showing the shortcomings of these things then don't be too critical also show how Bhaktism and Sufism has created everlasting impacts. For example, the same caste system, caste system or the priestly dominance or anything else, they have stood against. Uh, if you look at now, the everlasting impact will be the caste system that we see today is not as rigid as, as it used to be. Uh, untouchability, even though it is there in rural India, is not widespread and a lot of reforms has uh, you know, come to 
come to the society and our socio cultural milieu has been has changed for good because of intervention of bhaktism and sufism and uh, they have taught us prior to this there was god there was man and there was a bridge in between a priestly class who used to connect the man with the god uh, what we call the brahmanism or the hinduism uh, bhaktism and sufism took away the priestly class they didn't want the bridge between a man and god they wanted the man to directly approach the god okay and that is what the priest does that is what they taught us so if any point of time anyone wants to have a god they can have their god without having without going to the priest a lot of reforms in this way in our socio cultural milieu has come to for if you look at odisha also uh bhaktism and sufism highly influenced the panchasakha culture and it has changed the odisha culture as well for good so uh this is how you are going to you know analyze the uh, question specifically you have to give the reasoning why they were short lived but towards the end don't be too critical about it also so how they have created some everlasting impacts okay pretty straight for a question easy to deal with let's go to the next question how and why did the women question occupy the center stage of social reforms in india during the 19th century so specifically the question is asking uh, why the women question took prominence in you know or, or took the central stage specifically in our social reforms period if you look at social reforms period uh, the indian man of renesa that is raja ramon rai he was one of the prominent reformers in these times and if you want want to understand the mission he was very uh, very much you know moved by the sati and he wanted to ban it okay but if you want want to understand the mission you have to understand the man and i am pretty sure none of the students would have written this as their you know uh, cause behind you know women big taking women question taking the center stage because uh, raja ram mohan rai uh, his brother dies and while you know while returning to home Uh, he sees he he is a witness to the sati uh, his bodhi or in bengali they call it bodhi the sister in law uh, commits sati against her will and this this tears or provokes something in raja ramon rai and that is what becomes his you know life life's uh, single most uh, prominent mission to eradicate sati from indian society and so you have to show the reason because it was very personal to him to Uh, that is the reason why uh, the sati question became or, or was a primary driver behind you know raja ramon rai uh, almost all of his work okay and that is why he fought so vigorously against sati so that you have to show what was the personal reason and how it drove and made this question you know a part of our social reforms similarly if you look at say jyotiba phule one of the finest reformers he wrote a book called golamgiri and he dedicated this to the african slaves in that book he also mentions that you know he looks at the indian society looks at the women in indian society and he says that you know these are, they are they don't have any economic uh, independence they don't have any political independence they don't have any social independence so he tells tells us that they are essentially glorified slaves so and and that is the reason why he with his wife jyotiba phule and uh, with his wife savitri phule has contributed a lot lot to women's education so you have to pick out the leaders what is what was their motivation and also apart from this apart from these you know personal factors you have to show the the historiography of that point of time the uh, british historians who wrote uh, about india specifically uh, chastised india and criticized india and specifically indian women okay and uh, and, and it was a humiliation kind of thing that's why the social reform in social reform says women question took prominence and as well if you look at the reformers too they brought the indian women to the outside world and uh, made them part of social reform because they knew that we cannot leave the half of humanity or half of our people behind in the you know stuck in their kitchen and homes and we call ourselves a progressed society so various you know you have to show the socio cultural uh, political currents of those times the historiography and you know few other points so that way you should be dealing with this question this questions appears easy but it is one of the uh, difficult questions to answer okay
let's go to the next question <clears throat> okay discuss the present natural resources conservation policies of orissa this is a pretty straightforward topic uh, easily can be dealt with uh, i am not going to discuss that explain the regional incidence of poverty in odisha in our crash course in our uh, test series also we have elaborately discussed about uh, regional incidence of poverty in odisha and while dealing with this kind of questions you have to show uh, the incidence of poverty and and which part of odisha is you know uh, because it is asking about regional incidents you have to understand the regional part that means it is asking which regions of uh, odisha is, is specifically uh, very poor okay so you have to do a odisha map you have to show the you know incidents higher incidence of poverty over there also in this question you can in, in our test series also we have asked this one uh, aspirational districts program uh, the government of india is doing it specifically for the backward uh, districts and i think 10 districts of odisha are there so that also you can integrate here and to show you know the poverty map of odisha let's go to the next question uh, critically examine the roles of pressure groups in political process of odisha so pressure groups uh, if you look at uh, obviously uh, pressure groups upc also ha has asked this question because uh, farm law and the pressure group the farmer pressure group that you can you know uh, bring into discussion as far as india is concerned similarly for odisha you have to find out the pressure groups and and uh, how they you know how they uh, act or you know how they impact the socio specifically the legal environment or the uh, political environment in odisha that you have to so so basic reading of uh, basic reading of uh, lakshmikant and integration and, and, and integrating that into you know odisha part smart integration will you know do the job prs are level players in development of a country okay uh, so they are see a question might be say have two or three sentences but uh, you have to find out the crux of the question then and only then you can answer it properly so the next question is asking about pri specifically the structure and function of panchayat samiti in odisha we have elaborately discussed about it all the pris and different hierarchy of pris and what are the issues of pri all those things we have discussed so pretty pretty easily we, one can you know discuss this one i think we have uh, also discussed about pri and how their covid management to so pretty easy easy question if you prepare it well i'm not going to discuss it discuss it much because it is it is more you know fact driven or data driven let's go to the next question examine the status of public health in tribal areas in india we have discussed this one gave questions in our uh, a uh, test series as well see i have i have been telling you right the tribal pockets of india or odisha has been changing into diabetic pocket of india and odisha why is that because if you look at the uh, food basket of the tribal population of india and odisha uh, now they are heavily dependent on pds public distribution system and public distribution system they are only getting calorie rich foods they are only getting rice uh, wheat and maybe some you know a dal so and that is what their food basket is now uh, prior to this they used to have or the tribal population of india and odisha used to have a very diversified food basket okay they used to uh, hunt the meat and all those things they used to have fruits meats and had a very diversified food, food basket and they were not living a sedentary lifestyle but now uh, much of the tribal pockets of uh, odisha and india they have more or less they have uh, been living a sedentary lifestyle mostly dependent on pds and because their food baskets has changed and became more calorie rich and their lifestyle has changed and become sedentary so we can see a higher incidence of diabetes in tribal pockets of odisha this we have discussed in our crash course and all so this is one of the major reason major issue you have to bring it up i think many students won't be doing that apart from that you have apart from that you have to discuss about sickle cell anemia you have to discuss about malnutrition and the percentage uh, and poverty and as well as poverty driven malnutrition uh, and starvation as well so these are the major issues apart from this uh, it is the question is asking about their behavior health seeking behavior if you look at the uh, tribal population of india they are mostly reticent uh, they <clears throat> they find it very difficult to go to the or approach the uh, primary healthcare centers 
they have their some point of time they have the, most of the time they have their own um, medicinal systems uh, they have their own doctors most of the time the, the nature driven medicines do work but sometimes they take you know they they do exorcism they uh, do certain things on superstition uh, and that leads to loss of life which should not be there so they are reticent uh, as far as they are you know they are reaching out to the primary healthcare center is concerned and health is concerned so that has to change and uh, Apart from that, the tribal pockets of India are, have been facing a lot of diseases, specifically uh, some diseases which are very, you know, high over there, sickle cell anemia, as I told you, uh, then we have uh, malaria, uh, dengue, all those things, you have to bring it up and, you know, explain that. <coughs> Next question, how is communalism is a threat to national integration analyze? A pretty straightforward topic, basic uh, preparation of communalism and national integration, you can, you know, pretty straightforward and pretty easy topic too. Okay, so I am not going to discuss that. Assess the personality prof profile of deprived classes students in Indian society. So it is asking about the students coming from vulnerable and marginalized sections of society, specifically students coming from SC, ST and uh, OBC sections of society and when they are, you know, integrated into the mainstream. What are the, what are, what is their, you know, uh, profile, personality profile. If you look at their personality profile, they uh, exhibit inferiority complex, they have, uh, they have, you know, left out syndrome, okay. They don't feel, they don't find them fit in and they are subjected to bullying, harassments and all those things that should not be there at all, okay. So, these are the things you have to discuss, okay. And uh, obviously, they cannot catch up with the class um, most of the time. They need, you know, some little bit of hand holding. So, these are the things you have to discuss. So, let's go to the next question. Discuss the importance of conservation of heritage sites in India. <laughs> yeah, it is very important to conserve our heritage so that we are aware of our history. And if you go to any uh, heritage in India, any heritage sites in India, uh, you might find, you know, love symbols and uh, lover's names uh, inscribed upon them, okay. So that is very unthoughtful of, you know, those who do those things, that is very unthoughtful uh, for us as Indians, as a, as a society, okay. So that is why, and why we need to conserve heritage sites, because it tells us, it tells us a lot of things about our past, what we are, what we came from. So, it, it takes us back to our roots. So, that is why it is important and it is a symbolic too. So, a lot of things you have to uh, you know, mention in this one. Apart from that, it is one of the fundamental duty too, duty of our citizen uh, as a citizen. So, that also you can integrate in this one. Pretty straightforward topic. So, you can discuss. Uh, okay. Next question, the Gupta is question is a bit difficult one and uh, people with optional, history optional only will be able to answer it. Otherwise, whatever written by the students, general study student who don't have history optional, their answer is not going to fit in, okay. So, I will not be discussing that question in detail, but it is a question which is difficult. Uh, the revolt, next question, the revolt of 1857 was much more than a mere product of sepoy discontent. We already know that. You just have to give it, give reasons why it is, you know, much more than sepoy discontent because uh, people from all walks of life participated in it and uh, all those things you can, you know, uh, bring it and show in the answer, okay. And everyone, everyone say, everyone who participated in it or mostly the leaders, they had their personal cause too. So, that also you can show. Uh, discuss the density distributional pattern of population in India. Uh, we have discussed it as part of our geography. Uh, density distributional pattern of population in India specifically, uh, say Delhi or Chandigarh, you have to show the population density somewhere around 11,000 people per square kilometer. And Odisha may be say 250 to 300. Uh, Northeast may be somewhere below than you know 200. Uh, and then you know, so you have to show in Odisha map, sorry, India map, you have to show the uh, highly or densely populated regions of uh, population uh, regions of India as well as you know uh, less or sparsely populated uh, regions of India. If you look at the Himalayan belt from Jammu Kashmir till Arunachal Pradesh and whole northeast, sparsely populated because the difficulty of the terrain. Uh, or highly populated region or 
region having high population density gangetic deltaic regions okay deltaic regions coastal belts are specifically draw a lot of population that you can show over here okay very easy question can be discussed okay uh, what are the major causes of regional imbalance in india straightforward question regional imbalance why it is happening all those things we have discussed in our crash course and test series as well so uh, pretty much straightforward question and doable and you have to show when you are discussing about india why the west co west coast of india is pretty much developed why east coast of india is pretty much you know more or less poor now those things you can bring it up next question interesting question judicial legislation is antithetical to the doctrine of separation of powers see this is a two or three statement question but crux of the question is judicial activism versus judicial overreach and you have to have some you know good number of examples to discuss about it okay don't be scared when a question is you know say i usually tell my students that when you come across a question that appears difficult uh, always remember nothing is going to come beyond the syllabus okay the fruit cannot fall far from the tree okay usi ke aas paas hi kahi girega so the smart student what they do is they find out the crux what the question is ex exactly asking and then you know they go ahead and answer the uh, answer the question you no need to be lost in the translation okay the question will be asking about one or two things but it might you know come to the point uh, in a in a very different way okay so this is specifically uh, judicial activism versus judicial overreach that debate you have to bring it in give some examples and next it is asking is it healthy for a democracy no judicial legislation is never healthy for a democracy that means people go to judiciary to you know to enact a law only when the the law is part of job of the legislators when they are not doing it okay or uh, when the legislator the people who are ruling us and the society those who are ruled when there is no sink in between them the society wants something or it is more much more advanced but the law that is governing the society is outdated then people take to the judiciary to have a you know uh, 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 remission or or you know uh, have a judicial legislation on that subject okay so that means it is it it implies that we don't have a healthy bonding between the society or the ruled class and the rulers okay when that doesn't happen or when that doesn't exist then we see a lot of judicial legislation and it's not healthy for democracy that you have to mention uh, next question ordinance making powers are misused at times evaluate the constitutional and judicial safeguards in preventing the same pretty straightforward question ordinance ordinance making power you have to quote the article uh, names and then what are the safeguards as far as constitutional safeguards are concerned and the judicial innovations that has been pronounced in you know uh, in the recent years that you have to bring in and uh, discuss the question pretty straightforward question not a question to be you know worried about justify the statement that human resource development is the foundation of nation's development uh, while discussing human resource development uh, we have talked about it at length okay so if you look at uh, japan and korea i gave you examples of japan south korea uh, if you look at those countries they don't have uh, they are not mineral rich they don't have uh, vast expanse of land they don't have a huge agricultural system they don't have they are tiny countries very unstable countries uh, if you look at their geography and all still they are the prosperous countries why because if you look at japan as well as south korea they have hugely in, hugely invested on their you know uh, on their society on their uh, specifically on their human capital enhancing their human capital when i say human capital it's talk about standards of living uh, specifically education and uh, you know education and all those things skilling and all those things so if you look at japan and korea because of their you know higher human capital they became a prosperous country same can be said about you know kerala kerala is not a mining state kerala is not a state where you know lot of uh, resources are there uh, mining and all other things uh, if you take into account however as a state it has invested a lot into its you know into the development of its human capital that is the reason why the state is much more developed and doing well in almost all uh, human parameters okay so as a state or as a country that is the job if we want to develop our society or as a nation or as a country or as a state we have to invest hugely in our building our social capital and human capital okay that's why human development is at the core of any other you know development or or, or it is at the core of prosperity that we need to understand 
as evident from Japan, South Korea and you know other countries. That is the debate you have to bring it here. Examine the impact of COVID-19 on education sector in India. We have given a essay topic on this one also, impact of COVID-19 on children. One subtopic can be this, okay. Uh, we have discussed this one as well. Uh, if you look at uh, COVID-19, it had uh, many of the people uh, lost their jobs and uh, the most suffered, the, the most vulnerable sections has uh, suffered hugely. That is what you have to show here. So most people lost their jobs, they could not afford uh, three meals a day, pro decent meals a day. However, you know, their children had to go for online education, so they could not afford it. If you look at the, uh, because schools and colleges were closed, so the colleges and schools opted for online education, the government advocated it. However, only 8% of rural India could, you know, really benefit from it. And many of the students, uh, many of the parents of the uh, students living in rural India could not afford a smartphone nor didn't have the internet and all to you know avail the helps of uh, helps of or benefits of online education and uh, a whole generation is lost to the you know lost to covid and uh, there are has been other cascading effects as well that also you can discuss but as far as education is concerned you have to quote the data how much population or how rural india you have to show the rural urban divide and how what online education did for the children and how many of Indians could not you know avail it that you have to show for example vaccination we have government has come up with co-in portal but how many how much of rural India can you know can avail co-in portal okay that was a very difficult in the initial stages okay so digitization is good but again the rest of the population of society should be able to you know afford it should be so there, there was a question of affordability availability and you know accessibility which was missing that's why digital education even though in covid 19 digital education uh, was there it didn't reach uh, much of the society okay that is what you have to discuss in this uh, question uh, analyze the contemporary internal security challenges to india very interesting question we have elaborately discussed in our uh, crash course and test series as well. So uh, I have told you right internal security when you are discussing it There has been some security issues in India which have been there since our independence So these are the issues which are essentially perpetual in nature. So in perpetual So categorize this you know internal security into two groups perpetual that has been there and going to be there say for example Nuxlite, Myosim etc and uh, in the second part, in the second part, you have to discuss about the emerging ones. Emerging ones, you can talk about the cyber bullying, cyber frauds, and all other issues that is driven by the you know cyber world. That you have to uh, bring it and so there was a series also Jamtara series, right? That talks about you know the digital fraud, different methods of digital fraud, all that siphoning of money, etc. So internal security, low null for tax, many other things. Okay, we have discussed it elaborately. So try to bring in these things, divide and categorize them, perpetual and emerging ones and discuss accordingly. 20 mark questions, so easily doable, say 7 to 8 marks for perpetual ones, more focus should be given on the emerging ones, okay. And uh, so, and then human rights, uh, next question, let's go to the next question, the last question. Uh, explain the judicial endeavor in India for the protection of human rights. The judiciary is there, we have a constitution solely dedicated to protect the human rights to ensure that there is no uh, tyrannical tendency of the or, or no parliamentary supremacy is there or the tyrannical tendency of the parliament is checked that's why we have a judiciary right so judiciary has been there to protect the human rights it is the final interpreter of our constitution as well and you have to mention the from the innovation of basic structure to the expansion of article 21 uh, right to shelter, right to healthy environment, all those things, all those things are, you know, um, came from the judiciary. So that you have to show how judiciary is not only protecting the human rights guaranteed by the constitution, but also it is helping it become organic and, and you know, change as per the society. That means it is helping expand the human rights as well. It has uh, struck down the section 377 of IPC, that is LGBT rights. So all these things you can discuss here. So from innovation of say innovation of basic structure doctrine to you know uh, expanding the human rights or, or expansion of article 21 and all that you have to bring it here okay 
a pretty straightforward question you have to give examples here and be done with it so hope i gave you some insight into the general studies paper 1 and going forth going forth it is going to be difficult the questions are going to be analytical that means it demands thorough reading of things not just you know just not just you know say overnight reading uh, thorough reading and understanding of things and internalization of those things okay you have not only read it or uh, by heart read it by heart read it but also internalized it so when you see those things it comes out uh, from your brain automatically okay so in our roots batch we are trying to inculcate uh, that uh, we are looking for around uh, you know we have say for example 50 students we have so uh, we are trying to create groups and uh, for each group we will give a topic so we are trying to build a culture of debate discussion and deliberation through our roots program and uh, that way that way say we will give you a topic to all the groups and they will come do the research and come up with you know uh, come up with the answers and then we will have a uh, discussion or session on that and that that will help you enrich your you know your thinking your ability and it will polish the way you answer your questions so uh, it's not a one day's job it, it takes you know a lot of time to build that and we are trying to bring that culture into odisha and uh, help student uh, not only clear opsc but also upsc that is the objective of our uh, roots program and uh, uh, if you are interested you can definitely contact us and thank you